the Leica R 24mm. I've spent months searching for a good copy at a reasonable price. If you also love vintage lenses, I'm sure you can understand my struggle. I spent a lot of time asking questions to sellers. Is the glass clean? Do you have more pictures? Oh, thank you for the pictures. Can I have a little bit more? I would like to see from different angles. Is that a fly? Did you try to make some graffiti arts in the front element of the lens? For me, it was impossible to find one. I even asked my friends in Sicily to find one for me. Everyone knew about my struggle. But one day, while I was trying to track down two lost packages that I didn't receive, the introvert delivery man, that is damn fast and he knows that I want to tell him a couple of words, brought me an expected package. It was a funny package. It was closed with the unboxing proof duct tape. Dear Luca, I'm sure you will make something beautiful with this gift. So, so, Gina. If you're not Italian, you read this name Gina, not Gina. Just to be sure. I really have no idea who Gina is, but uh, I really appreciated the gift. <sighs> the smell of the lemon was just fantastic. It really reminded me Sicily. And this, my friends, is what Sicilian friends do for you. They send you food, mostly lemon or orange, depending from the season, loaf, and the Leica R 24mm f2.8. Nine elements in seven groups. One of them is floating, a short focus throw that I think is around 60 degrees. The lens is using a super annoying filter size of 60 mm, so good luck to find the filters or adapter for this lens. The max aperture is f2.8 and the minimum is f22. This lens is able to deliver outstanding image quality. The minimum focus distance is only 30 cm. It is extremely sharp already at f2.8 in the center and uh, corner to corner sharpness is achieved at f5.6. Wide open at f2.8 the lens shows uh, strong vignetting, but closing the aperture to f5.6 the lens is gonna be sharp corner to corner without vignetting. If you like to film with a pocket 6K or any APS-C camera, you will be happy to know that the lens is pretty sharp already at f2.8 and it doesn't show basically any vignette. The back and the front bokeh is pretty good already at f2.8, even if there is a strong vignetting with the full frame camera, but if you close down the lens by two stops, it's gonna still look pretty good, both for the front and back defocus areas. If you love flares, this is one of the best lens I ever had. Uh, it can produce really beautiful flares in almost every situation, but you have to be careful because they can be really strong and distracting in some situations. The focus breathing with this lens is pretty low and there is a test shot at f16 and the focus breathing is barely visible. The chromatic aberration are really well controlled, even wide open, but if we close down the aperture by one stop we are gonna get some better image. Close up sharpness is pretty good already wide open, but again stopping down by one stop the image quality is gonna increase. If you like to see how the lens renders skin tones, there are some test shots, both with the log video converted to Rec. 709 and two sample JPEGs of me. Some test shots under blue light, both in full frame and in crop. Skin tones under the sunlight and skin tones with some nice flares in the shallows.
some more skin tones in cloudy light around 6500 Kelvin. This lens can be tricky for close-up. If you have a full frame camera, it's better to film in a super 35 crop because you're gonna have less distortion. And uh, yeah, we cannot miss some bokeh balls with uh, Christmas lights, of course. And more bokeh balls. The Sun Stars is pretty average because the lens has only 6 uh, curved blades. Another chromatic aberration free image already wide open. Uh, some uh, lens flares and ghosting test. If you would like to play with the raw images and footage, you can find my Patreon link in the description where you can download the footage. Thank you for watching guys and I'll see you next time. Hmm.